Don't you bad. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi guys. Um, we're, we're here again and this time we've got something that I don't think is going to be on anyone's radar at all, apart from maybe the few of you whose it is. Hmm. <laughs> which is the definition of. Yeah, get good. But no, this is this is from this is a house Dan has introduced me to, and I've only just smelt today for the first time. Um, but a Canadian perfumer, yeah, doing mm, some amazing Matthew, stuff. Matthew uh, Meleg, I think that's how you pronounce it. Meleg, Meleg, Meleg. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, Speaking of Meleg, I've got a touch. Give me a mic. So this is um, Meleg perfume. This is on Instagram. I saw uh, Yana of. Drop your thing again. Of, um, of, of Tom and A's um, um, uh, re reviews, YouTube reviews. She's one of the reviews. I love her. Yeah, I'm watching that. She's always yeah, she's good, that really you? interesting things. And I know she is into slightly sexy, slightly animalic things. So <laughs> like we, us. Exactly. And and you know, and that's why I kind of keep an eye on her reviews. So when she talked about this little thing, civet uh, cat sheepra, I thought I had to get my nose. That's in totally up our street. I mean, I'm going to say, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be completely honest about this, that this is my process, and this sometimes happens, that I re look at something on Instagram, I'm on the train on the way home, I'm a bit drunk, <laughs> and I thought, I'm just going to buy it on Etsy, so I did, I just ordered it then and there, you know, at one o'clock in the morning on the train home, um, 60 quid, best blind buy of your life, Canada, I would say, um, f uh, for 30 mils, I think it may now be a bit cheaper, I think I maybe got it on a Black Friday deal or something like that, a bit more expensive now, um, Bit more expensive. That's the one, yeah. Um, so when it arrives, it's you know this is a very humble bottle. Um, I think it's just a decant bottle. It's about as no frills <laughs> a bottle as you yeah. can. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't even think the top is crimped on. I think it's just screwed on. So this is very much reassuring actually. about the presentation. Um, it's just you know it's a statement to say what is in the bottle that counts, not yeah. not about the bottle. So. Um, so do you want to... Yeah, let's put some of this on skin. Let's go left. You're going to go left. I'm going to go left as well. Thanks, pal. Um, so, Matthew Meleg is someone who is very, very, very interested mm. in vintage, old perfumes. His fragrances are non-IFRA compliant. <laughs> oh, that's really good. So he's going to be really excited about this. Um, there's a real nod to the past. Mm. So he's using. So this has got real civet in it. I think it's also got real musk. It's got muscatone. It's got you know levels of things which would not pass IFRA regulations. Now, so not coming soon to a house of Fraser near you. Uh, uh, oh yes. But oh, I love it. I just and the, the big thing. The big thing about this. I want to say my big. Overriding impression is you see an indie fragrance like this in a really simple bottle from a uh, perfumer who is self-taught, who is, let's say, breaking the rules. He's not if for compliance, um, using real animatics. You think this is going to be a big wham bam, smack you in the face, yeah. rough around the edges fragrance, and that is absolutely not what I get. I get something no, beautifully elegant, doesn't it? Incredibly elegant, and and something which feels like. I mean, this is just my impression mm. that it's taken a lot of time over it, and it feels like a real classic French perfume. Yeah, I really love it. I mean, if you said to me that was a hundred, a hundred and ten-year-old Chypre from the days of Quartier and Guerlain, yeah, I would totally, I totally believe you. Apps. I really, really, really like this, and <laughs> I really, really like it. Wonderful bready, sort of bready Play-Doh thing going on as yeah, well. Yeah, it's a little bit, but there's like yeasty somehow. It was interesting because when I said this to Joe earlier. Although it's a sheep, but the first wow. thing, that, the first fragrance that sprang to my, my mind was the Mouchoir de Monsieur. Yeah. Because there is this, there is a bit of civet present in the start, and there's bergamot as well. So although it's a sheep, it, I feel like the opening is kind of bright-ish with the bergamot. Yeah, totally. It's kind of juicy. But already... Very there, lively. There, there is a bit of civet, which I never actually think the civet becomes huge in this. It doesn't become overly pissy, I don't think. No, not at all. There's a bit of a kind of an animalic hum. And then, but even... Creamy as well. E yeah, well, e exactly. I think even from now, you're not getting something which is too sharp and harsh. You're all medically getting something warm and creamy and round. That's really beautiful. I think, and then it's developed. Wow. It then starts to go to a, a little, you get, I think there's a bit of ylang ylang and a hint of white floral in the mid. But there's definitely some sweet rose. I think there's rose absolute in this. I'm starting to get some nutty aspects as well. I'm, I'm beginning to get uh, like a marzipan. Mm, well, you said there's an almondy marzipan-y... I'm getting something, yeah. like, a, like a sort of slightly cakey mix. Mm. 
I'm getting, which is reminiscent of some aspects of La Bleu, actually. Yeah, and to tell you what, this reminds me a little bit, actually, now I think about it, in terms of new releases. Must Khabib. Yeah, totally, well, totally. Which, you know, when we talked about that, again, that felt, I think that's a non ifra compliant uh, fragrance, which, which smells like a real nod to the past. Um, wow. But you definitely, you start to get rose. Definitely, you then get oris. Yeah, the butteriness of, the, of that the oris is coming through. Richie, you can feel and it. I think, and I think that kind of segues from what you were talking about, the kind of the kind of armady, mm. cakey, bready kind of feel. Yeah. You get all these. God, that's really good. Floral uh, swimming around. Um, and then the dry down is just this this warm, sexy hug. I never feel this becomes oh. a big, brash, um, big wham bam kind of fragrance. It's just a big embrace, it's big totally, sexy yeah. cuddle. And I was quite surprised that when I wore this, Gosh. I did receive. I've only worn it out, kind of, you know, in public, I guess, on on two occasions. And I was quite surprised. I received a few compliments. Um, yeah. Both, both times I, I wore actually when people I met them when I go to Halco and they're like, oh god, you smell good. Um, yeah, I um, mean, it's, I can see why because it is it is appealing as well. And it's not shouty. It's just people. You, it, oh, it's really, really, really good. I think it kind of shows confidence in a, a perfumer, a kind of new perfumer, to come with something like this, which doesn't feel like a wham bang. Yeah, impression it's not a statement thing. Opening, it's more about the um, the overall feel. Uh, the the other fragrance, the other recent release, which I mentioned to you, that reminds me of a mm. bit is Bengal Rouge. Yeah, Pion. massive, massive, massive fan the of that. The fuzzy, animalic, furry, cuddly aspect. And yeah, also the kind of rose in that. And there's a slight kind of honey oh. kind of sweetness to it. But it's really good. Isn't it's it? really addictive, actually. It's really, it's really addictive. I found this. It was also mm. incredibly. This is extra strength, um, 30 ml bottle. It lasted for ages. The first time I tried it, put on at eight o'clock at night, like seven o'clock the next morning, it was still going very yeah. strong. Um, Genius. I mean, I, I have to say, I think for someone to come up with something like that, and some of the other things I've been looking at on the yes, on the Etsy website. Um, it looks like he has a real appreciation of the past mm. and the origins, which I think is so similar to where we are. Yeah, he sent, I mean, I, you know, I said, after I ordered this on Etsy, he then um, sent me a bit of uh, blur, which inc includes some of the ingredients and some of his um, background a bit. And he, yeah. I think without, without meaning to sound derogatory, he's a kind of a perfume nerd. You know, he's a real kind of geek. But yeah. Kind of interested in, in kind of, um, kind of, ancient kind of apothecary kind of, kind yeah, of techniques of, of combining yeah. um, ingredients um, and I feel this is a real uh, labour of love and, it's, and this is also he's not pitching it as he's never going to sell you know tens of thousands of bottles no. of this he's just selling it for kind of people like us kind of it's for the aficionados others, isn't it who maybe miss you know miss those uh, ingredients which are now no longer over compliant i mean i think i'm getting a bottle now definitely yeah. <laughs> i know i say this all the time but i am definitely i've worn this on my skin a it's few on times. my phone already i think maybe um we, we should just say you know it's not if a compliant so yeah if you're gonna wear it on skin test it on a small small skin, little patch like um, uh you know your don't go straight for your eyeball or big toe no <laughs> or testicles or anything but, but you know um, that said non if a compliant doesn't mean it's going to burn your face off it just means yeah. They can't sell it to hundreds of thousands of people in case two people Europe, have yeah. an itch, you know. But it's it's clearly safe. I, I you know, I've got it on my hand. You've been you've worn it. I've Other people it. have worn I really, it. Really, 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 really like this. Um, it's very, very beautiful. Yeah. It's one of the things I've been most taken with in a long time, actually. It's so, it just it's so sophisticated. It's it's not shouted. Do you know what no, I mean? it's no. such a finished product. If you, I mean, you know no, I mean, like I've said already, but if you you know if you told me that was. That was a vintage Guerlain. Hmm. I'd absolutely buy it. I mean, it's it's so rounded around mm. the edges. It feels like this is a formula that's been arrived at after years and years of of trial and error and getting exactly the right blend. You know, love it. Beautiful. I'm looking forward to um, you know trying some. I mean, if you've tried any order more, a bottle, <laughs> if you've after. tried any more from this this house, Melek perfumes. I think at the moment they're only selling an Etsy. But if you've tried more from them. Um, let us know. Yeah. Maybe we'll try. Thank Maybe you. send us a bottle. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you, Jana, uh, for bringing this to our attention. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. And it's it's quite rare. Mm. I mean, I, when I ordered it, I was drunk. But 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 you know, it's, it's quite rare to, for me to read a review and think, yeah, I'm going to buy that. You know, I, 
in a way, I yeah. kind of think I've got enough perfume at the moment. But I just read it, I thought, <laughs> this sounds like I'm going to like it. And I did. And that is exciting. I know we always say don't blind buy, but sometimes when something just looks so... I mean, you can't get, you know, you can't just go and buy this and try it in a shop. Sometimes, if something excites you, you just jump on it, don't you? Yeah. And that is a thrill. And it's, it's cheap enough mm. that it's not crippling. It's yeah. not going to break the bank. But it was a win for me. And if you don't like it, you can sell it to us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Awesome. Till next time. Bye. Happy sniffing.